Hey channel, Fernando from SkyFi Audio. If you're a fan of the channel, you know that we focus mostly on vintage equipment. So today I'm gonna to do something a bit different though. I'm gonna review a new product from Hi-Fi Rose. You see, I've been looking for a network streamer for some time, uh, something unique, something that didn't quite exist. Um, and I have a few sort of requirements for one, for us to be able to recommend one with the vintage systems that we sell. And um, when I saw the Hi-Fi Rose hit the market, I said, well, this might be the right fit. So I ordered one up and it's right here. On this video, I'm gonna do a box, an unboxing. I'm gonna open it up, show you the guts of it, show you the back panel, the front panel, play with some of the features and software settings. Now, I'm not gonna dive in super deep into all the menus. There are lots of great videos already in place for that, but I'm gonna try to give you a fresh sort of different perspective on why, why I think this might be a good fit for us. So first and foremost, let's talk about the form factor. Um, I don't know about you guys, but when I get home and I wanna to listen to the stereo, I'm not particularly keen on using my iPhone. I kind of wanna retire for the day, perhaps leave it upstairs. Um, I don't wanna be sitting on the couch on my phone or an iPad the whole time. So for me, it was important to find a piece of equipment that had a front display that is really easy to manipulate. And I know other streamers have had displays on them for a very long time, but nothing like the Hi-Fi Rose. The entire front of the unit is a display. That means you can walk up to it, push the button, select your music, and get right back to your seating position. And if you're lucky enough to have your rack near your couch, that's even better. Now, of course, there is an app for this, and you can go ahead and connect and operate it from your iPhone, but it's still nevertheless, I consider that to be a great bonus, but the real primary requirement is for me to be able to walk up to it and push buttons. I love interacting with equipment. I love violin controls and input selectors and all that stuff. So I never really liked going back to a, an iOS interface to, to, to connect with my stereo. That's why I like turntables and, and things with lots of buttons. I also wanted a nice large display. Um, I am not getting any younger and I know a lot of my viewers aren't either. So having a, a sizable display that's easy to read from across the room is also super important. And this has not only an amazing display, but also tons of other sort of features for displays, including you know eight or 10 different meter configurations, which everyone loves a good meter, right? Second requirement was the ease of setup and use. Um, I don't want a device that has you know, 13 different menus deep in in order to configure the IP address or the Wi-Fi or anything like that. I wanted something that I can walk up to and get it you know, from the box to playing in under 10 minutes. And I think we've achieved this with the Hi-Fi Rose. The display on it is, is so large and so easy to maneuver that setup should really not take more than a few minutes for the average person. I'm talking connecting to the Wi-Fi, logging in one of the accounts and hitting play under 10 minutes. That's, that's a huge, huge advance for us. The next important thing was versatility. I uh, wanted a streamer that has you know, all the greatest uh, streaming services on there. I wanted something with FM, or at least the ability to do digital FM, because um, a lot of people still like tuners, especially in our New York City area. And um, the ability to make sure that's upgradable, you know, really easy upgrades as, as sort of things improve, I wanna be able to have the unit improve with it. So uh, executing a software upgrade on this unit is super simple. You can even set it to automatic, I think. So that's also uh, an important piece for us. You'll see in some of the menus later that the configuration for the outputs, which is really a tripping point for a lot of these streamers, is about as good as it gets. There is a form panel representation of all the connectors in the back. I'll show you that a little later in the video. Um, and just illustrate how incredibly simple it is to select, enable, and disable different connections on the unit itself. Lastly, the price point. Now, I considered these streaming devices to be almost uh, disposable devices. They evolve so quickly and age so quickly that I don't really feel comfortable, at least with my wallet, in spending a ton of money into a streamer DAC. You know, I've loved products from Sonos and, and Blue Sound. Um, I didn't want to spend, you know, five to $10,000 on a streamer. And that's just my personal preference, right? I realize people have a different sort of value proposition with money in their heads. Uh, for me, the price of this one, which is about 2,500 bucks, was the limit of what I'm willing to spend on a disposable device. Mind you, yes, it is software upgradable, and yes, we're gonna be able to improve it, but the hardware is the hardware, and it's not going anywhere. The chipset is a chipset. 
the Wi-Fi has already been def defined and determined, so there's no real upgrade path for this from a hardware point of view. So spending more than $2,500 just was not not my cup of tea. Um, so, and again, you know, to each his own. If you are into 10, 20, 30 thousand dollar streamers, they're out there for you. They're just don't happen to be for me. Now I realize also $2,500 is a lot of money, right? So, but you know, when a good amplifier costs five grand and a good set of speakers costs 10 grand, you know, 2,500 for streamers seem within the realm for me personally. So that's it for these panning shots. I'm gonna go ahead and write to the unboxing. Um, video should take probably about another 15 or 20 minutes or so, so hang in there. Let's get right to it. Okay, moving on to the unboxing part of the video. Pretty standard fare. It does have a handle, which is nice. Beyond Audio from Hi-Fi Rose. Okay, we'll fly through this. Um, so this stuff is made in uh, Korea, I believe. It's a, it's a pretty interesting brand. Haven't been, a lot, been around a terribly long time, but they're certainly making big waves in the market. Good ABS uh, clamshell design. See this packed in a, a fabric sleeve. All right, so it's always interesting um, when you look at stuff on, online and then you actually hold it. Um, perception of size is always uh, a bit off. Um, so it's a, it's a good size. It's not a, too small in terms of connection. So it's gonna look fine with compact systems, stuff from Belcanto, Nagra, et cetera. Um, nice aluminum finish. I like that the top is integrated into the front. Makes it look like it's built from billet, which is not. Clearly, it's an extruded piece. We can't tell if the sides are plastic or aluminum, but we'll we'll know once we get in there a bit. Yeah, so an L-shaped top, and then uh, looks like a steel metal or stamped steel metal bottom, but good quality stuff throughout. See, we've got a, a access panel down here. We're gonna have to dig in and see what that's about. Aluminum, or at least maybe plastic, maybe aluminum feet with rubber on them and quite a stack of connections. Check this out. Okay, so from left to right, we've got the IEC power cord with an integrated fuse hole that's just below it. It's just labeled AC input, no mention of voltage on here. Uh, Ethernet, a standard RJ45 for network connection. We've got a ground here. Um, a set of uh, USB 3.0 on the first one at five volts and one amp, and then a USB audio out. So it must be an in and output. Um, below is the other type of USB audio in. A set of opticals, an in and an out for optical, an HDMI, it's a two-way connection. And then we've got a set of, looks to be digital inputs and outputs, and then analog in for an external source. And then just to the right, we've got a much higher quality RCA jack for the analog output. See so gold-plated um, chassis mount versus PC board mount. So really just about every kind of connection I could imagine on here. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, in the accessory box, we've got a remote, which is a nice size, not too small, not too big. Um, power cords for European market, Asian market, and then here we've got a IC power cord for the US market. That's ours. And batteries is for the remote. And uh, a manual that's not too bad. All right, so that's it. Not much uh, to report here. Let's go and plug this in and see what it does. All right, a quick press of the power button gives us the, the rose uh, symbol, which is fading in and out. Pretty cool stuff. I see there's a plastic film on here, which will have to peel off. It's a little harder than that. All 
Okay. So So we've got a few streaming services up front. Oh, this is the best panel. I've seen this online. This is super cool. This is a representation of the connections in the back, which is super clever. Um, and it allows us to essentially uh, enable and disable settings just by a, a button push. And this is where most products fall flat on their face. Uh, their menus to enable and disable things are incredibly complex and oftentimes will lead to uh, user error or probably calls to the manufacturer because they can't get something working. So this is a great screen. I'm, I'm very pleased to see this. This allows us to essentially enable and disable the analog outs and ins and really just quiet down the unit um, because you certainly don't want any of these things running that don't need to be running. I bet you that it's a measurable difference uh, in the noise floor. So kudos to, uh, to hi fi Rose for this particular menu. And here they sort of illustrate that the dark brown is activated and that the sable is white. So I noticed that the initial power on is about 20 to 30 seconds, um, yet the wake up is only about three or four seconds, which is nice. So a quick button push there disables the display. I suspect the electronics are still on on standby um, and that the power button is probably just quieting down the display, especially since it boots up fairly quickly. And getting the unit up and running was fairly quick. Um, all I did was uh, sort of set the Wi-Fi, uh, connected and entered a password, which was fairly painless in this uh, in the system. And once you're on Wi-Fi, you can then switch over to your iPhone if you want. But I realized that it might not be the right audience for this. Yes, the iPhone is a great addition to the system, but I like it because of the interface. So it's important for me that I'm able to configure everything right from the interface. Now, the only music streaming service that I subscribe to uh, is Tidal. So uh, configuring title was fairly straightforward. Got to get your username and password right in the first shot. Um, the layout was a little clunky in terms of accepting the terms and conditions and stuff, but you can get through it okay. It's not as bad as I've seen. It's not as good as, let's say, Sonos, but um, it's certainly doable. Uh, notable things on here. Um, you can delete some of these icons, but not all of them, just like um, Apple does with their iPhones, right? There's certain things they don't want you to hide, and there are certain things that they'll give you the flexibility with. So you'll experience that once you set up one of these units. There are some things you've got to leave on here. Uh, RoseTube is kind of cool. Uh, that's sort of a YouTube interface that lets you play a video. Um, so I imagine what they've done is they've gone and they've curated or identified which of the uh, videos on YouTube are sort of worthy or able to stream into a device like this, which is kind of cool. Um, so you actually can play a song and see the video on it. Not sure why you'd want to other than this is a cool gimmick. Uh, as an audio file, it's not very often I'm looking at a video while the audio is playing, but um, it is kind of cool um, and a great sort of indication of what they're capable of doing. Here you see a Beatles song playing and it's uh, it's uh, showing the image as well. So the format isn't a perfect um, aspect ratio for this device, but um, again, it's a cool thing to show off. Now the radio stations, which is another thing I was looking forward to, um, is a m mediocre delivery. Um, so there are two things in here that are radio related. There's this radio button here. And you can kind of go by country. Uh, I'm from Spain, so the first thing I did was go in there and see what sort of things they were offering. And um, sure enough, there were there were plenty of selections in here uh, from Spain, uh, which I do sort of like. A lot of them work. A lot of them don't work. You know, it's, I realize it's not up to to Rose to uh, to curate that too far. So it's kind of hit and miss depending on on the country and the station. So you know, kind of moderate your expectations on how good the rate of delivery is going to be on here. So I'm pretty pleased to report that the uh, Tidal integration is pretty good. Um, here you can see I'm in browsing my library. Um, it clearly identifies MQA um, capable content, which is a nice hit. 
and uh, playlists, genres, favorites, uh, even tagging something as a favorite is does work pretty well. So uh, kudos to to Rose for getting this right. Uh, I can't imagine this being a viable product with at least real good integration to the streaming services that we all love as audiophiles. So these are some of the themes that are available. There's a ton of them, and they're actually really nice. Um, you can just kind of scroll through them and see what matches your system best. But the one that really caught my eye, obviously, was this one. This is in the spirit of um, Nagra audio. You've got the typical Nagra rotary selector that's recessed, um, and the two Nagra audio meters, which actually work and move to the music. Super cool. And then over on the right, they're reflecting here the condition, whether you're streaming from the 250, the USB, or HDMI, and these things actually work. Now you, and you can even touch them and, and change the, the backlighting on there. Super, super cool. One of the primary reasons, uh, not the display, but obviously the form factor was why I was uh, drawn to the unit. So to get into the page, you essentially uh, go into view mode, which is up here on the right. And there's a change theme up a button. Uh, this one's a bit of a disappointment. Uh, when the music is slow, it kind of doesn't work so well. Or at least it looks like the, the group, the first, um, you know, eight or nine bars together at once. So it's not very responsive or very fluid. Hoping they'll fix this in a future upgrade. It's one of the few bugs that I've sort of found on this, on the unit so far. Uh, this sort of warm glow is nice if you've got a vintage system. Uh, this is obviously the Macintosh theme, which is uh, spot on. Uh, the coloring is, is really a great match to any Macintosh system. Uh, and this one. So the previous one would have been more modern Macintosh. This one looks more like 1970s uh, and 80s kind of theme. And purple, red. Uh, the white one is kind of generic, goes really nicely with the silver finish. This one is one of my favorite ones. It's sort of a uh, Looks like an audio research uh, reference, one of the reference amps that have the clear glass fronts on them. So if you're in the audio research world, that's probably your best bet. Same thing in white. This, I, I think it's an Onkyo looking theme. I believe those sort of that median meter look is from Onkyo. Uh, some more VU meters and back to the Nagra. Real nice selection. Great, great job in giving us tons of uh, tons of options. I would love to see in a few more bar graphs, maybe uh, Duro or one of these sort of like recording studio half moon or half semicircle view meters. That would have been super cool. I could come up with a huge list of uh, meters I'd love to see on this thing. But generically, overall, I'm pretty pleased with the options so far, and I'm sure. Or I hope that much like a Tesla car, you know, you wait a few months, you get a new upgrade, and uh, they add a few features to it, including some more new meters. All right, so I've cracked this unit open. Um, now, the one thing I did notice is that there was a sticker uh, indicating that the warranty is void if you crack it open. So I've done this on your behalf so that you don't have to uh, as well. So. Interesting construction. It's um, a two L-shaped uh, chassis. Essentially, the top cover in the front is one L-shaped piece, which I love because it eliminates any sort of seam in the front. So this is an aluminum extrusion. And then the bottom L is a sheet metal extrusion. I'm sorry, it's just a sheet metal stamping with a bend in it, um, which is uh, pretty elegant. Um, display is obviously connected to the front, as we see here. And we've got th um, several wires coming out of here. One is for the control, the volume, and the muting power. That's this ribbon cable here. Um, and then we've got another ribbon cable here for the display. Uh, and I believe this would be the touch section. Um, so the three ribbons here, delicate affair. So I don't recommend anyone open one of these units up. Layout is um, pretty conventional. We've got uh, two PC boards and it all looks like in-house stuff. Um, at this product level, you often see them outsource um, or sub assemblies or sub boards out to other manufacturers. In this case, I'm going to guess that this is all uh, done specifically for this product, which I like to see. So um, we've got a toroidal transformer, which is unusual for this sort of price point, and a power supply section here, utilizing pretty good quality components throughout. Um, capacitor wise, I see Nishikons here, 
I see a Shanwa over here on the power supply section. Pretty much good stuff. It's all surface mount technology, you know, really high density surface mount integrated circuits and, and capacitors, resistors, and all that. So not a lot of uh, um, through hole components. Uh, this allows them to make these things compact and tight. The top board seems to be housing um, some of the networking. I've got the Ethernet port on the top board, the two USB ports, and the HDMI. So this is almost like the PC uh, functionality. This is essentially the computer running this whole thing. And the one sub-assembly that isn't there, so it looks like they've uh, used a third-party uh, wireless card for both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. <coughs> and that's this guy right here, the little piggyback board on this multi-pin connector. And uh, two antennas coming out. Um, this is going to be the Wi-Fi antenna, and this is going to be the Bluetooth antenna. Attached to the only piece of plastic we see in this unit, the side pieces. Now, I would have loved to see an aluminum here, but I know that would have compromised the signal uh, of the unit, and they would have had to then go to external antennas, which is also a liability. I see units uh, of this caliper with external antennas where they get broken off. So I'm okay with having a, a plastic piece on the side um, to have good reception. And sure enough, we've tested this on our Wi-Fi here and in my home, and it's pretty good Wi-Fi um, sensitivity and easy to connect to the internet. Um, also, I noticed here um, the audio circuitry is right about here. You can kind of start to see the differentials between left and right channels and some higher quality components, some more discrete stuff uh, indicating an audio section in this corner here. Um, so again, this is mostly power supply up to this point. And the audio circuitry here and the networking and, and computing up there. As noted before, the uh, RCA analog outputs are higher quality f chassis mount uh, connectors, while the others are all PC board mounted. So a good compromise in between. Uh, the important ones are higher quality. Uh, the other thing I noticed, I'm not going to flip it over because it's kind of precarious, is that there is, um, there is a panel in the bottom that you can open up, and it reveals essentially a location for a drive of some sort, whether it's uh, conventional or solid state. There's a connector in there as well. So this unit looks like it has the potential future possibility of having some sort of storage, which we'd love to see on this unit. Maybe there's a different model or a different model plan with internal storage, but you could put a pretty high density drive in there and turn this into a uh, storage unit as well, which would be a killer piece uh, for this size and form factor. So here we have a, a look at the bottom. This is the removal panel I mentioned earlier. Uh, it's held together with a couple of screws. It is a plastic cover. And there's the multi-pin connector for hard drive. We see power and then data on the other side. So this could be both an SSD or a conventional hard drive for future storage. All right, so I've got the unit back together. And I've left the side panels off because I am going to paint them silver. Um, the black and the, the silver qu doesn't quite work for my system. I've got a Nagra system. I'll picture it above so you can see. And the beautiful thing about this model is that it's the exact same size as the Nagra components from about 10 years ago. So Nagra doesn't make a streamer. They make a DAC. So instead of buying that, I decided uh, to give the uh, Hi-Fi Rose a chance. And that's why I got the unit in the first place. I thought it'd be the perfect match for the Nagra. And sure enough, the only difference when you stack them together is that the panels don't quite match. And it is missing um, spike feet, which I'm going to add so that it kind of blends right in with it. So here's the RS-250 in its completed version. So I finished uh, painting the end plates. Uh, had a real nice match with a silver case finish. Um, I do wish they kind of did this at the factory. It's a much more complete looking unit. And uh, as mentioned before, a good match for my system. Overall, great experience with, uh, with the RS-250. Um, a couple of little small bugs. Sometimes the volume control is not very responsive. Uh, it kind of skips around a little bit. So you have to be careful, especially when managing the volume from your iPhone. I did have, even though I've got a pretty good network, I did notice that sometimes there's a bit of a lag between setting the volume on your iPhone and actually responding, which can lead to d some damage if you're not careful, if you've got a super powerful amplifiers. Minor, minor thing. What I suggest people do is actually just set this thing to a fixed line output 
and use your preamplifier as your volume control. Other than that, I love the ease of use. I love how easy it was to set up and um, the display is absolutely wonderful. Um, I have absolutely no complaints about its sort of performance. From an audio point of view, it's exactly what you'd expect for a modern streamer. You know, super high resolution, good details, good dynamics, nothing to complain about in terms of uh, its audio performance. So overall, thumbs up on this unit. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I've certainly had a good time making it for you. Please like and subscribe and check us out online if you want to purchase one of these units. We can point you in the right direction. And that's skyfiaudio.com. Uh, I appreciate you watching this video.